Happy Monday! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. All right, it is ABC week again, and we are starting the F fox embroidery uh last week we finished up this e elephant i love how the quilting turned out i did that at my parents house uh, i'll show you guys that again uh so here we go another embroidery today all right hello hello everyone okay let's scooch on over happy to have everyone in here again so okay Last week we finished up the elephant and we got all of our adorable little daisy chain little squiggles on there. We did the turkey work tail, uh, just the emerald green uh, ease, I think, and the, the sunflower. They just all turned out so sweet, I think. So that's last week's and this week we are going to be stitching the fox. So let's get going right away. I want to transfer this design. Uh, one of the requests we've had for this one is to do the F's completely in French knots. <laughs> I have not filled a space with French knots like that in a long time, so that'll be kind of fun, I think. Um, otherwise, we have some chain stitches on here, uh, and the rest is kind of back stitch, and then his little paws, his little hands are satin stitch. So I'm going to kind of do my normal thing tonight, I think, is let's just try and get in as much of the outline as possible. I love doing the outlines first uh, when I can, just because it feels like I get a lot, it makes me feel like I got a lot done. Uh, so all right, here's the uh, design, uh, our little instruction sheet. So I'm going to have this open near me as I stitch. We'll just have them right there. Uh, we have the traceable pattern, so this is if you wanted to trace it onto your fabric or, or another, uh, some other fabric. And then I have the iron me one, two, ten. now this is reverse because we are going to, we're going to flip it and then press it. So we'll be doing that first thing. Ooh, and we'll be doing uh, four different stitches for, for this one, so I'll have that nearby as well. So step number one with the iron me, same as usual, let's cut off that extra text because we don't want that uh, transferring to our design. Okay. And, uh, ooh, let me grab a paper towel quick here. All right, when, when I press, I always like to have a paper towel ready just because the design can transfer to your ironing board. <laughs> just because the, the iron on it can go through the little holes in the weave. So I always like to put a little piece of uh, paper or I just use um, paper towel, put on there. And uh, we will be placing the fox. We'll flip it around like that and press. But first, you want to preheat the fabric. So I got my iron all heated up here. And I'm going to just press it. Uh, we're really just kind of heating it up here. All right. And I'm going to basically try centering the design about like so. And then I'm gonna just place the iron on top. I'm on the cotton setting and I'm just gonna hold it there for about five seconds and peek. Oop, I think I need that tail part a little bit more. And then I'm gonna shift to another section. Oh, it's totally working. Okay, great. I can pull it up and see that it's working. And there we go. <laughs> Looking great. Okay, and I'm gonna do one more right away because I've, I've been doing two uh, just because I'm still thinking that it might be fun to sew this into a, a little alphabet book as well. So I've been doing two, one for the quilt and one for the alphabet book. So I can use the same iron-on uh, more than once. I can use it like around five times. 
So I'm gonna just preheat my fabric again. Let's lay, lay that fox back down. Again, counting to about five and peaking. I think that's good enough. That was a little light. Oh gosh, plenty good. There we are, and that's our second one. I mean, that looks just as good as the first pass, which is great, and I should be able to use this a few more times, so I am gonna keep it. I always kind of hang on to these. Use it for later. All right, so this is the one I'm gonna set aside, and uh, you can kind of see that it did transfer a little bit to the paper, uh, so that's, that's why I wanted to have that as a, just a protector, just to protect my surface my uh, pressing surface there. So, all right, I got my got my little strawberry tray full of all the floss we've been using for this project. I still I still want to kind of wind those onto bobbins, those floss bobbins. Um, but I just haven't gotten those yet. Uh, Gretchen's asking, do I always use the highest heat all the time? Uh, I try and do what the fabric says, but you do need that high heat to transfer. You can test it at a lower heat. Um, to see if it works, but I find like that the, that high heat. But you don't want to hold it there forever either because you don't want to burn your fabric. Um, so just like that, preheating is like key. So preheat your fabric for sure, and then um, then you can do like a little test if you wanted to. Actually, you could do if you have like a little piece of like like a corner or something, you could use that iron me text as your tester if you wanted to try a lower lower heat. Uh, Aries is asking, do I prefer wood or plastic hoops? Um, I guess I typically use these wood hoops. This is actually a bamboo hoop. I, I use that the most, but mostly because I just have it on hand. Uh, if I really, if I really want to get super fancy what I'll do is uh, I will uh, I will cover what is this called again I totally forgot I will wrap <laughs> that's what it is I will wrap uh, the inner hoop um, whether it's plastic or or wood and that helps uh, decrease like how much it creases the fabric and it helps hold the fabric in better so i guess i don't know i guess i prefer my little bamboo hoops here just because that's what i'm used to but just i would use whatever is most comfortable for you but uh if you are worried about it holding in the fabric really well without any slipping um try wrapping wrapping the hoop with some spare uh fabric this is just like one inch extra fabric i think it's just linen that i had laying around um, just some cotton would work and the edges can be raw uh, and I just wrap it around the hoop oh hi crafting says I'm digging the wrapped inner hoop I freaking love it so much so and I don't know why you don't use this more I, you know what I do know why because I've, I've just been using the hoops from our kits and uh, I like showing that you you don't you can do all this stuff with like minimal effort, minimal supplies, but you know a wrapped hoop is super duper nice. So here's here's where I sewed it together. So this is just actually this looks more like a one and a half inch or one and a quarter inch strips. I'm sure I just had this from some extra project. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I did not cut this special for this. Um, so if you have some extra strips, maybe you were doing a quilt binding or something, uh, that extra little strips would be good. And I just held it in place with my, with my hand and started wrapping, uh, where I'm overlapping it about, uh, half of the, half of the strip width. And I'm just going at a 45 degree angle, pretty much. Um, if I run out of one, I'm just going to go over that spot again and just keep wrapping. It'll kind of hold in place. And then when I got all the way around, I just did a little whip stitch uh, to hold to hold the edge down, and that's it. So I, this is I kind of grab for this if I'm working on a project that's going to take a long time um, because, or, or like something that I might leave in the hoop. I try not to leave my projects in in the hoop when I'm not stitching it, just because I don't want that extra stress put on the fabric. 
but this helps a little bit. I've seen people also wrap the outer hoop, but then I find that it's hard to close it. Like the, uh, there's so much bulk that the closure doesn't really come together. But anyway, I do, I do love me a wrapped hoop for sure. All right, look at this max mess. I gotta definitely take care of this uh, soon, but let's start out with some red here. And it looks like I don't have any, ooh, maybe here's one. Oh, that piece is so small. I'll just, I'll have this on standby if I need a few more stitches. Um, but I like using the pieces that I've already split. So, all right, let's, oh wait, this is a piece. Ha! All right, I already have uh, from earlier. So I'm using, I'm using the same pack of uh, 23 skeins that comes in our, our penguin and fish uh, pocket skeins floss. I've been using the same 23 skeins for this whole project so far. So I've used some of it before. I haven't used all the colors though. I should maybe use some of those coming up here soon. Um, and uh, I've been keeping all the scraps. So this is all ready to go. I've already split it into the three strands. I'm doing the, all of these with, uh, with three strands instead of the six that that normal embroidery floss uh, stranded embroidery floss comes from. So this has six strands in it. I've already pulled out the three strands. And what that does is just makes my stitches a little thinner. Uh, and it's easier to pull the three strands through the fabric. Six strands can be pretty tough sometimes. All right, got my needle. I'm gonna do that pinch method of threading. Ooh, it's hard without, it's hard with my long, longer nails now. <laughs> my nails have not been this long. I, I haven't changed, uh, haven't changed the polish yet. So we're growing out here a little bit, but um, that's, I, I thought I'd let it go a few more, <laughs> a few more uh, days here. Okay, I'm gonna start with an away knot. Uh, what's the needle called? This is an embroidery needle. Uh, this is a size five embroidery needle. And the main feature of an embroidery needle is that it, ha it has a larger eye. So it's easier to pull, let's see if I can get it there. So it has, so it's easier to pull the thread through. Um, it's big enough that you can um, get a big piece of thread through and it has a sharp point. So uh, a cross stitch needle, how that's different is that that has a, a blunted point, a blunt needle point. Uh, an embroidery needle has a sharp. So this is like a size five embroidery needle. Yes, team chenille needle, yes. So uh, they're also called chenille needles. Uh, chenille needles can get like super duper big too. But yes, I, I love them. Um, so yep, yep. That big needle eye is the best. All right, I'm gonna just tie a little knot at the end here. We are gonna start with an away knot. Uh, which basically just temporarily holds some floss for me. I do like weaving in my ends instead of having knots on the back. All right, so the first uh, thing I'm gonna do, let's uh, do this outline. And I think I'll start right at the top here uh, and go zoop down there. And so what I'm gonna do, so here's that away knot. I am going to start from the front about three or four inches away from my starting point, which is right there. And we are gonna start with the back stitch. So I'll come back to this in a moment, uh, but I'm gonna start the back stitch. So here's my starting point right, right there. Uh, but for the back stitch, I'm actually gonna start like a stitch, uh, a stitch length away from the starting point. And uh, uh, my stitches are gonna be, I don't know, about an eighth inch big or so. I kind of vary them. Sometimes around tight curves, I make them much smaller, and then, uh, then like straightaways, like like a nice long straightaway like this. Sometimes I'll make them a little bit bigger. Just depends how I'm feeling. So you don't have to keep the same sh the same size the whole time. All right, I'm a stitch length forward, and then I'm going to go backwards towards my starting point. So I'm going to come straight down on the line there. That's our first stitch. And for the second stitch, I'm gonna just come up another stitch length away from uh, that last stitch there. And then I'm gonna go back to that point of that stitch and I'm gonna go right in the exact same hole. 
And that's all there is to the back stitch, and I'll be doing uh, uh, that for the rest of this outline. I'm going to read some of your guys' comments. Do you think I could use a cross stitch needle to weave in the ends when crocheting? Oh, I totally think so. So that, uh, Renee, that will totally depend on how big of yarn or thread you're crocheting with. So theoretically it will work um, if you can get your yarn or thread into the needle eye. Uh, but other than that, yeah, for sure. A tapestry needle or a darning needle um, probably would work a little bit better just because I think they're a little bit bigger. Um, and a tapestry needle has a, has a blunt end, if I remember correctly, too. But yeah, if you got a needle that, that works, just go for it. All right, and uh, I want to just address this. So here's our away knot, that little knot that we put on the front. So literally all we're, do redu all we're doing here is um, reserving this piece of thread for later. I'm going to weave in that piece of thread to what we what our stitches, which we now have. We didn't have any stitches to start out with. Uh, with our blank slate here. Uh, so I'm reserving this to weave in later. So we will come back to that once I'm done here, uh, done with this thread. So what I'm doing, uh, the style of embroidery that I'm doing right now is called the stabbing method. And that's when I go all the way to the front of the fabric, put the needle straight down, uh, like placing it straight down and then pulling it all the way to the back uh, and then uh, coming forward to the front again. Versus the sewing method, which I'm just gonna, I, I can only do the sewing method from right to left, so I'm just rotating my piece here. But the sewing method is where you go in and you come out at this in the same motion. So there, there we go, you can see the needle is going in and out at the same time, like I can see both of them at once. Uh, so we're, we're finishing the, the first stitch and starting the next stitch at the, in the same motion. And then we're gonna pull that thread through all at once. And there's our last stitch and the start of our next stitch. So to do that again, I'm going to finish the last stitch and then come up on the line for our next stitch and pull through. So that is the sewing method. It's actually much faster. <laughs> and I just learned uh, I just learned through the stabbing method, which now I'm going to do the stabbing again, where I stab, bring it all the way through, and all the way back up. Uh, I just kind of learned that way. So the sewing method is still feels a little funny to me. And I like with the stabbing method, I can kind of keep holding this upright. So I think it's nice, nice when I stitch with you guys. But I am trying to practice that that sewing method a little bit more. Uh, I feel like I can't get totally, like I'm not as accurate with my stitches that way, but I'm getting better. Uh, it's A tip is to definitely have your, your fabric a little looser in the hoop. That will make the sewing method much easier. But anywho, so we're just chilling, gonna work on this box. So the the uh his little face here and the tail we're going to completely fill in but we're going to do it with chain stitches so a lot of times i'll i'll fill in an area using uh satin stitch but uh, this time it's going to be with chain stitches which i think just adds like a cute little texture to it so we'll see how that goes Oh, Diana says, I have different size hoops. Oh, I love all the shows. Thanks so much, Diana. Yeah, I, I like having different size hoops around too. This eight inch hoop, which I'm using now is sort of my go-to, but I do love stitching in the those four inch hoops. That's that's this size. So for these small embroideries, I like this. You can do a larger embroidery like this with a smaller hoop. You just have to keep moving it around uh, as you go um, to the whatever section, whatever section you're working on. So that's fine. And I know six inch, a six inch hoop is pretty popular. People like that too. It's a little smaller than this, so a little easier to handle maybe. But I got a stash of different sizes to just, just 
just for the right one. And then, you know, it's nice to have multiple hoops because then if you have another project, if you have a project in progress, then you wanted to start another one, which, you know, happens, uh, then you have an extra hoop. Not that it matters, you can always take it out of the hoop and switch it to the other project and move it back to the hoop again, but who wants to do that? Uh, T-Bird Megan is asking, what part are you going to do the French knots on? The letters, yes. So I'm going to fill in the letters with French knots, which is kind of scaring me a little bit. I have, I have not filled in a space like that with French knots in a really long time, and only about like a tiny circle's worth. <laughs> so all of these, uh, like this whole shape um, will be interesting. I actually... <laughs> It's just so silly. Such a weird thing that, to have your mind on. But, like, uh, earlier today I was mulling over, like, how I would do it. Like, if I'd do it, like, a row and then I'd kind of, like, brick lay them. So, like, have the next row kind of offset. Or if i just kind of go however. Or if I should draw them on first. Or who knows. I, I uh, we won't do that today. We'll, we'll get there later this week. But just... Funny, funny thing for the brain to be reflecting on. Oh, Linda says, did you get to bring any syrup home with you? I totally did, and they have a ton. So uh, I did a, the little video that said that it's it's 40 gallons of sap. So if you guys don't know, my, my dad uh, tapped a bunch of maple trees that were kind of in the neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, this year and he got all this maple syrup making equipment and it is like high noon for that basically right now um, the sap is flowing <laughs> I think he stopped for the for the year because he's got a ton but uh, this past week or two it's been crazy so uh, and we visited them my parents this weekend this past weekend so we got to help you know which basically means watch and taste uh, the syrup. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. So it takes, I was saying in that video, it takes 40 gallons of sap, you know, just a clear liquid water dripping from a tree. It takes like drip, drip, like each drip. It takes 40 gallons of those drips uh, to make one gallon of syrup. So you're basically cooking down the syrup. Um, you got you, you basically put a fire underneath underneath it and it evaporates it and thickens it up basically uh, so it's 40 gallons of sap to one gallon of of syrup so we did not do the math on this but they have I think by the time we left they had pushing around 300 gallons of sap which is crazy town <laughs> One, like one drip at a time, they were able to get like, it was like 290 or something gallons of sap. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how that translates to, um, well, it's about, let's see, like maybe around eight gallons or something. I don't know. Someone's going to have to do that math for me. But uh, so it's a 40 to one ratio of sap to to uh, syrup and they got let's say 300 gallons so we did get to take we did we did get some <laughs> i gotta bring some back for jenna and uh we brought some to john's parents we stopped by them on the way home and and yep we got a, a i think um a pint or two how many trees are tapped, Amy said. So I think they ended up tapping 17 trees. And some did much better than, the, than others. Um, they were kind of the trees, like, in the median <laughs> of the neighborhood. So we tapped all the trees in the medians. And then there were a couple, um, a couple more that they were able to do. And he asked some neighbors uh, if he could tap their trees and... and uh, and he did, so I'm sure some syrup will go to them. <laughs> so he went, he tried it out for the first time last year, and uh, then he went full on out this year and got, like, the right equipment, and, and uh, man, it totally worked. And, oh, it tastes, the syrup tastes so freaking good. And, 
And uh, I was telling Jenna, I gave her her syrup uh, today, and I'm like, this has, like, a week ago, this was in a tree. <laughs> like, this was sap that was in a tree a week ago, which is just nuts. But, yes, now, I mean, I don't, the, the thing is, I don't eat a lot of pancakes or waffles or, or any cake for breakfast, <laughs> is, is what I say. I don't eat much of that sort of stuff, so I'm kind of wondering. We have a ton of this syrup now, and we actually have some from last year, too, uh, that we don't have finished. And I'm kind of wondering what do I use it for. We have a squash here, so I thought, ooh, I could drizzle it on top of the squash before roasting the squash. But if anyone else has thoughts on what to do with, like, the most delicious, fresh maple syrup, let me know. Ugh, it's so good, though. And I don't think they were sugar maples, either. It was just whatever maple... whatever maples were in the neighborhood. Um, I guess I don't... like, silver maples or something? I don't, I don't remember what he said the type of maples were, but I, but I think he said they weren't sugar maples, which is the typical thing for syrup. Kind of going every which way here. I don't really have a plan. I have a little bit of this red left, so I'm just gonna keep going until I run out of it. Oh, do I stitch here? Yeah, I do. Okay, just looking at the design. I don't know if I, if it this went up to white, but it, there is an outline of red still. Ooh, on ice cream. Now that's an idea. Mm. Oh, <laughs> we did have, uh, we did have. Um, Old fashions. We did have maple old fashions, and those were those were pretty good. Ooh, chocolate ice cream on top of chocolate ice cream. Wow, I would have never even thought of that, but that makes so much sense. That sounds delicious. Ooh, Amy says you can use it on your Easter ham instead of brown sugar and pineapple. Uh, we should get some ham. I haven't thought about that at all. Uh, but yeah, I should get some ham, and that would be really good on there. Ooh, Linda says, I wonder if you can make a sweet salad dressing to go over a salad that has fresh fruit in. That's a nice idea. Yeah, like a sweet, gosh, sweet goes with everything. Like a sweet and savory would go well together. And salty, mm, all that stuff. Okay, those are all freaking great ideas. And now I want a ham too. <laughs> I haven't had ham in a while. Yeah, oatmeal. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's a go-to. I don't eat a lot of oatmeal, but when we're at our parents' house, my parents' house, um, we usually have oatmeal. And then it's like a, we have like a buffet of uh, things to put on the oatmeal, like toasted almonds and fruit and yogurt. And and mom makes yogurt in the, in, in the Instant Pot. And, and then, yep, for sure, some syrup on there. That's the best. Definitely the mixed drinks, Lazy Cosmos. We, we, uh, we had that old fashioned, and that was good. Yeah, so you can just replace the simple syrup in, in drinks. But you have maple syrup, uh, maple syrup margarita. Would that work? We might have to get some mixed drink stuff. All right. So I'm weaving in the ends. I like weaving in. Uh, uh, I like going back and forth like three times. It's kind of that third time that locks it in. Just trying to grab as many stitches as I can. There we go. Snip that little end off. And this is what I love about that weaving in the ends. I don't have any little ends flailing about, any of the little floss ends. Um, I hate when you stitch and you accidentally pull those to the front and then you got those little floss ends to the in the front. That's annoying. Um, so I like weaving the end. So we have the, our reserved thread here from the way knot. I'm going to snip the front knot away. That's kind of holding that thread in place. And uh, there we go. So we've basically released that thread that I've had on reserve with that away knot. And I only had to do that because there was no other stitches to weave into. Uh, I won't have to do that again unless I'm starting a whole fresh area. Uh, and I don't want to see like a jump on the back. But now I'm going to thread that and we'll weave in a few more stitches. So it does use more thread than just like knotting, starting with a knot, and it is an extra step. But it makes such a nice clean back. 
you don't have to worry about your thread catching on anything and it's just I I just really like it and I'm just going back and forth three times again it's, we're kind of just making like a extended long knot versus uh, one little knot oh Gretchen that sounds interesting I do have a pile of carrots on hand uh, we just got a huge bag and then I, I like chopping it up for soups and then like for just sticks of carrot so we always get like a huge bag of them um, but Gretchen says you could add some carrots with a dash of whiskey, <laughs> nothing bad there, uh, in water, and then uh, cook. So like with um with the syrup. This is me pouring syrup. <laughs> I have a hand gesture for me pouring syrup, I guess. Oh, and we had to have <laughs> all of us had when Dad was um cooking down the syrup. We all had pocket spoons so we all had our our plastic spoons in our in our like winter coats that we were carrying around with us and then it was t when it was time to taste we could put our little spoon underneath the uh you know the sp spout or whatever and <laughs> taste the syrup oh uh jenna saying the uh my nails are holding up well they're holding up Far better than I was expecting, that's for sure. Ooh, I have to start a whole new piece of thread here because we started with one. So I'm going to cut uh, the 24 inches about. But yeah, I mean, don't look too closely at the nails. <laughs> They're definitely grow in the like overgrowing uh, mode, but I'm trying to tweak... Or, uh, tweak out a few extra days here so maybe i'll do it i'm gonna see if i can make it through this week with them yet so like i said don't look too closely <laughs> i'll just try and move real quick then you won't see how how grown out they are <laughs> but yeah i am really really happy with this i haven't had to think about think about redoing them um this entire time and and i would have had to redo them like probably six times by now if i was just using lacquer and uh, i mean they're looking pretty rough now but not as rough as what a like a day of lacquer going by so um so i'm like yeah i'm gonna just let them go for another couple days <laughs> we'll do them um we'll do them maybe maybe friday i'll or i don't know we'll see later this week we'll see Oh, did I skip a stitch? I, I did skip a stitch here uh, just because I was running out of thread. Um, so I I kind of just skipped it to start this line of the ear because I'm going to stitch like over it. So uh, I like kind of covering up. You can kind of see how I did it here. So this ear went to d down to this point here and then this stitch kind of covered up that point uh, that, uh, that met this line here so i kind of like doing that i did that here too i mean it's it kind of in the design there but uh, i do like when i do like kind of covering up the the edges and then it also makes like it makes the ears look behind the head when the head stitches are in front of the ears so i kind of like that same with here like this tail looks like a little bit in front of the back uh, because i have that stitch kind of overlapping that edge so i just kind of left it I left it open because I'm going to come back and, and do that now, I think. Yeah, so let's let's just think of the path here. So I think that's where I'll... Well, I got this ear up here. I think I'm going to start at this ear up here. We'll go this way. And then I'll jump back and get that, that last stitch. And then I'll come back up this way. And I think i got to go all the way around here. Yep, I'll go to there. And then I'll have to backtrack a little. And then we'll get his little hands and rest of his body there. See how, see how far this... Uh, this thread will take us. So I'm, I'm going to start at the top of the ear here. So I'm going to weave in my ends again three times. So I'm going to start going towards where I want to start. And, uh, you know, you can leave a little ends there and I can cut them off before we start. Like if the thread's uneven or if you're afraid of pulling it out. Uh, but then that's my second one. And then the third. And I'm trying to grab as many threads as I can as I go through here. All right, and that third kind of locks it in place. And if you do have any other little ends there, you can snip them off. That's that's getting pretty picky, <laughs> snipping that little one off, but that's okay. Okay. 
Let's do, well, nah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going with the stabbing method. I, I like the stabbing method, it's just more comfortable for me. But the next color I'm gonna do for the nails is gonna be that lavender, uh, I think. I think it's pretty close to, I think it's pretty close to my lavender here. Or I suspect it'll come out kind of like that. This turned out much, nah, I don't know, sort of darker than I thought. Definitely darker than what the powder itself looked like. So I think it just looks more, it looks more like red nails, even though I think in my head they're like, a bright cotton candy pink or bubblegum pink and yeah, not, not a bubblegum pink like a more of a hot pink but yeah I'm excited to to do another color but time caught up in me again and I'm just like yeah maybe I can squeak out a couple more days on this okay and oh will be cute for Easter yeah so I think that purple will be just like yeah just right for for Easter that'll be fun Yep, and it'll be just in time. Oh, so uh, I think this Saturday I'll be doing, I, I think, uh, you know, came up today and I'm considering it, so let's just assume that this is happening <laughs> and I'll let you know if it doesn't. But on Saturday, I think I'm going to do a marathon uh, live again. So like a couple hour long live. I want to work on that tulip punch needle again. I would actually love to finish it. I would love to finish uh, at least the punch needle part of it. Um, I, I don't think we'll finish, you know, like gluing the back and, and all that, but it would be awesome to to finish all the punch needle part of it. Kind of like super duper itching to do that. So I think we may do a Saturday stitch along for that. And I don't know what time, um, but earlier than now, it'll be, It'll be like mid-morning sort of thing, like probably like an 11 o'clock start time sort of, but I, I don't know if, uh, for positive on the start time, but um, I'll be on for a while, so I'm sure if you pop on in the afternoon, I'll pop up in your live somewhere. <laughs> but I'll, I'll um, write on Facebook before I, before I come on and yeah, and I think if you follow me on, like, TikTok or wherever else, it'll show, like, if you go on, it'll show if I'm live. But yeah, so I think I will be doing doing that on Saturday. Um, I'm considering maybe not doing Friday and then coming in for that long Saturday instead, but I haven't quite decided on that. We'll, we'll see how far we get on this box and everything this week. We will see. Oh, Lazy Cosmos says it's always fun to see what new things you're working on. I, I have been jumping around a lot lately, haven't I? But I just kind of love that. I, you know, it's, it's just I don't know. Maybe it's a mental health thing. Like where, like, like certain crafts provide certain things for me. I suppose. Like sometimes you just need like the. Like, you learn a new thing when, or um, you're playing with an idea that you had forever when, or sometimes you just need to, like, chill and knit a few stitches or cross-stitch a few rows just to totally zone out everything. And, and then sometimes, like, with embroidery, I feel like that's more of, like, an active decision thing. Like, it's, it's but at a very base level, so... Like, I can chill and totally zen out while doing it, but I still get to make, like, active decisions. Like, even how big my stitches are, you know? Uh, it's still kind of an active decision versus just knit to the end of the row. <laughs> and then, like, tatting to me is still super exciting because I, I feel like I'm learning and trying to get more comfortable with that. So, I, I, they all fill a need. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's all going for that ultimate, I guess, win of finishing a project and excitement of starting a new one. And the whole idea of like uh, using up all the things. I'm excited to, I'm like always slow motion recycling. Like uh, that, uh, the punch needle is using just yarn that I had on hand and, and I'm using up, 
you know, tiny little balls of yarn that have been around forever. So that always, that's, I've been on that kick for the past few years, for sure. But yeah, so we're primary, primarily embroidery, but I do like hopping around quite a bit. So the first uh, three weeks of the month, like the first full week of the month, we're doing like one of the letters and this, the same thing for the second full week. Then the third week is embroidering the embroidery of the month. It's the sunflower this month. Then after that, it's a full free th free for all. And same with the Saturday lives when I do when I do those, it's a pretty random too. That fourth week of the month is is fun because we get to just play around with some whatever we want. Yeah. All right. See, I like doing the back stitch first because I feel like I get a lot done. <laughs> so we'll we won't have the whole outline done uh, for sure, but. We'll have a nice big start here. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow I would love to finish the outline and maybe we'll get all these little back stitches in right away. They're not back stitches, but the stitches that are on his back <laughs> and the back of his tail. Uh, maybe we'll just get those done. I think those will go quickly. I guess we have this little satin stitch pause. We could maybe do the, maybe we do the satin stitch pause before we backstitch around them. It'll be easier to satin stitch these without um, the back stitches in the way. So I think we'll do that, which is good because I'm, I think I'll run out of this floss before we get that far. I'll just do like his chest here maybe. Oh gosh. I don't know now because I'm going to have enough, I'm going to have enough red floss to do a little bit more than that. Hmm. What we could do is just reserve this floss. Like just, maybe that's what I'll do. I've, I've not done this in a while. I think I'm going to just take this floss off the needle and we'll just let it hang out up here. If I was doing like thread painting, I'd actually just leave it on the needle and I'd uh, start fresh. But I think I'm going to just leave that up there and I'm going to start the... Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit more because then I can weave in the ends. But I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the little satin stitch before finishing up this thread. But I don't want to like just cut this thread and, or I don't want to like weave it in and then like do it, like start it fresh again. So I think just by letting it hang out by itself, will be fine. I'm just traveling in the back of the head stitches versus making that jump. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna stitch, like maybe up to the point where I'm gonna satin stitch because then I'll have all these stitches to weave into the backs of. But I am going to just let this let um, this red hang out, and then I'll pick it up later. But yeah, it's going to be easier doing this satin stitch, his little paws. Um, without all these back stitches in the way. <laughs> you don't want to do. Yep. Something for everyone. All right. So now I'm going to just let this live up top here and I am going to, uh, let's pick a, I mean, let's maybe use, I'm kind of thinking maybe we use like this fawn color. I know it's different than the, the feet we have here, but I haven't used the fawn yet. And I think that might be kind of cute for his toes. And we can play around. So I think I'm going to use this for his little feetsies. <laughs> Where we are going to be doing that punch needle again this weekend, I think. I think I'm going to do a long Saturday stitch along of that again and just try and finish it up. So <laughs> we'll be jumping around the, to the different crafts still. All right, I want my three strands. So I'm bopping the top of this and pulling out one strand at a time. Zoop. Uh, I still think this is like a fast, easy way of getting the number of threads that you need. Zoop. And it needs a sound effect. All right, just placing them back together. Alrighty. 
this will just be like little subtle paws um, versus the purple paws that he had before. So again, with, with satin stitch, the cleanest, prettiest, shiniest way to do it is just with one strand of floss because then you can have all those single threads laying next to each other. But I'm using three still, um, like the rest of this piece, just because it's uh, going to go a whole lot faster then. We'll be able to fill this shape a whole lot quicker. So I'm weaving in the ends here. Gosh, I might do the same thing. Like I might satin stitch this and then move the thread to the side and then do the rest of the back stitch and then come down here and then do the satin stitch again. Oh man, I'm being doing like I have not done this with <laughs> like leaving the different different colors before. So that's kind of weird. All right, I think we'll, I'm gonna connect these two little pointy ends and we'll fill in the space around it. And I'll go kind of like diagonal satin stitch basically. I'm gonna go one on this side. So usually with a satin stitch, I kind of go on the outer edge of the the line because I then I can then I'll be covering up the line with my satin stitches but in this case I'm not going to worry about it too much I'm going to go like right on the line because I'm going to be tr I'm going to be going around the outline of this with red still so I'm not going to worry about totally covering up that line there this is nice and subtle I like this kind of fawn color So I'm just always starting on one side and ending up on the other. Oops, yeah, I was a little worried that might be a problem. Just kind of hold that out of the way. All right, a couple more little stitches here and then, yeah, I think I'll I guess maybe the same thing, but maybe I'll just, um, I'll come from the back and pull up the thread to the front maybe, and I'll just let it hang out. And then I can weave into the backs of the stitches and come back down here and then do that satin stitch. This might be a weird way of doing it, but I don't know. I'm kind of into it today. All right, I think this will be my last stitch here. All right, and then I'm gonna just, I don't know, come up right here maybe. Switch back to my red. Now again, I could have just had two needles going at once and then uh, then I wouldn't have to thread this again. That's what I would do if I was doing that like thread painting technique. Yeah, and now I'm just gonna trace around his foot. There you go. This is why I didn't have to have the edges so perfect because I'm covering them up here. So I definitely have made shorter back stitches going around these tight little curves. I always, always kind of get them smaller. Um, then it looks more like a curve because you have more little lines to kind of create that curved shape. So Littler stitches, and then when I have like these straightaways, then sometimes I get a bit bigger. Sometimes I'll try and be consistent throughout, but I don't know. I tend to get them get them a little bit bigger here. I think we'll run out of this red thread before we get to the next satin stitch area. We'll go forward here with this stitch. I'm gonna get his little chest. Uh oh, and I think my thread in the back is in the way. <laughs> I didn't, think, didn't consider that, so I'm just going to scooch it up. So I'm going to stitch over it. Oh, hey, Noeline. Oh, gosh, I didn't realize you had daylight saving there, too. That whole thing's a mess. 
<laughs> we, uh, yeah, and we had it here, so we're all we're all messed up everywhere with that time thing. And that took me a long time to recover from that this year for some reason. I just feel like it hit me. This year. Okay, I'd like to be able to get as close to that next uh, satin stitch area as possible, but we are going to be running out of thread. I'm going to just do this in one big stitch. Normally, I'd probably have done this, this one in two stitches. But we're going to just do one. Okay. Oh, maybe we will get all the way to the to the hand. But yeah, so I'm going to weave uh, this fawn color in the backs of the stitches we just did, and then we'll do that little paw as well. Actually, we may be out of time then, so we'll finish up um, I think I'm going to get one more stitch here. We'll do more of the back stitches tomorrow, and I think we'll do the same thing. So I'll, I'll probably weave in this end, and then we'll start fresh for these other toes. I don't, I don't think I'm going to weave all through those, the backs of all those stitches. We'll just start fresh. Yeah, I'm going to weave in the end here, even though I probably have a little bit more that I could have done, but it's a good place to stop it since I'm going to do that that satin stitch here anyway. There we are. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this back through. Let's thread it again. Okay, I'm going to just weave in the backs of these stitches. Instead of jumping straight down to here, uh, I don't want to be able to see that thread from the front, so I'm going to just go in the backs. And we'll travel down here. And then travel to there. There we go. Oh, Karen, yes, I have uh, my YouTube channel is Penguin and Fish. Um, and you can just go like youtube.com slash penguin and fish or do a search on there and I'll pop up. Uh, but all of these videos, all of my live videos are there and we have how to do, um, like 14 different embroidery stitches there, how to's and, and some other tips and stuff. It's mostly, mostly my live videos, but we do have other shorter videos as well. But yeah, if you missed anything tonight or wanted to see, you know, some of the elephant that we did last week, all of that's recorded in the lives. All right, again, I'm not too worried about the edges like I normally would be here, uh, just because we are going to be stitching more of that red over the top. But yeah, I think tonight we'll finish up this little paw here um, just with the satin stitch and I'll weave in the ends and I think we'll call it for the night. Uh, and then I'll be back here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central. But yeah, thanks everyone for the follows and, and likes and, and all that on. On all the places, I do appreciate it a ton. For sure. I keep smelling it. What's that yummy smell that I keep smelling? And it's, it's because I have that thread conditioner. My brother's uh, thread conditioner here open still, and it just smells delicious. And I, it keeps catching me off guard, like, why does it smell so good over here? <laughs> and I just have it open, and I forgot to use it tonight. Um, on the thread, but it's just like, gosh, really, <laughs> I should put one of those in every project bag, no matter if it's embroidery or not, just to have like something that smells good in the area while you're working. <laughs> I think that's great. Uh, that's going to be the new idea for that. Yeah, 
yes, so uh, Barbara's asking about the nails. Yes, these are still the nails from that first dip a few weeks ago. So this is the start today. Yeah, Monday. Today is the start of week three <laughs> of having these nail nails. So they're definitely growing out. But dang, they look completely acceptable still uh, compared to like what the lacquer would have been. The lacquer would have been gone six times over already. But yeah, they're still relatively shiny and stuff. They look like normal nails still, except for they are getting grown out. And there are a few chips here and there. But not, again, not anywhere near what my lacquer nails would have been. So I'm digging it. So I'm trying to stretch it out for a couple more days. I was going to do them uh, yesterday, but we were driving home and I was going to do them today. And then I didn't. And so uh, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe, maybe they'll last me this week yet. All right, so I think we are going to stop it here tonight. So we got, like I said, I like doing the backstitch first because I feel like I get a lot done versus if I just did, like, all the satin stitch and, I don't know, the backstitches, I, I would have felt like I wouldn't have gotten, it wouldn't have felt as far, I don't think. So, all right, tomorrow uh, let's finish up this backstitch for sure and these other little satin stitch feet. And then I, th I still think let's get these stitches on his back these little seed stitches let's just get those out of the way then those will be done maybe we should do the eyes as well let's let's do the eyes then too and then oh and the nose we forgot we forgot about the nose so and the nose so we'll just get all that like little excess stuff done and then we can really focus on filling in these shapes so we have the tail and we have his little head uh line there um that's all going to be with chain stitch i think we'll use the white still i think that'll be pretty so a white chain stitch and I think I'm gonna do a reverse chain stitch because it might just be easier so we'll we'll go over how to do a reverse chain stitch maybe we'll do one with a normal chain stitch and the other with a reverse chain stitch because then we can look at both and then finally we will do French knots to fill in this letter these letter F's so not sure how that'll go yet, <laughs> but that'll be a couple days uh, till we do that. Probably uh, Wednesday or Thursday we'll, we'll get doing um, those French knots, um, but I think it'll be pretty. So uh, think about what color you might want those, and uh, yeah, so that is uh, what's coming up here. All right, you guys. So thank you all again for uh, hanging out with me. And uh, yeah, so tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time is when we'll pick this up again. And it, it's just kind of fun to be working on another alphabet letter. I feel like we're cruising. I feel like we're past the beginning of these letters. I don't feel like we're halfway yet. I feel like that's a ways for that. But uh, I'm, I'm feeling good at where we're at so far. And that we got like most of this quilting all done, too. I would like to start that uh, actually assembling them. Uh, with the quilt as you go process. So I'll um, be thinking about that too uh, this week while we finish up this letter F. So awesome. Thank you guys again. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Bye.